It's like fucking. This is like Chris Farley and Billy Madison. <laughs> but you're on good, great! <laughs> We are Popcorn Fits and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. Scott. JB4. Uh, Gary Rucker. Gary Rucker, back again. Gary, Gary Rucker, Rucker, proprietor, Rucker. director, actor, over at the Rivertown Theaters, brah, over in Canada, brah. You can go to rivertowntheaters.com. That's with an E-R or an R-E to check out the latest shows um, and ticket availability. Uh, it, it's it's Kenner Broadway. Kind of Broadway. Oh, nice. that's, yes. ah, that's clever. Thanks. Oh, we got something new since you've been here last time. I didn't think of it. That's good because uh, normally when you come in, it's the same old bullshit. Same, I don't know why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> you must I have fight new with Scott, agree with John, and go home. It's, <laughs> <laughs> so great. Oh, just forty-five more minutes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he's so pissy. We're, we're going to talk about something he enjoys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Is that no, why you're mad? No, he doesn't like it. I thought you liked it. I love it. All and right. you know what? I, I want to go back. To, like we had, uh -oh. you were on the show. A few, we're talking about the Mandalorian. If you haven't figured it out, yeah, we or read the show. Notes, are going to talk about it? Uh, yeah, yes, which is on Disney Plus. Which I literally had like the biggest happy moment of my life, and yeah. remember texting Gary about it, and then Gary making fun of me for being so excited about and happy about the show. On Not just the show. about about anything being happy about because I've, I've literally never seen it i've known you since we were what 14 well then maybe this will be, this I'm, will be I'm, a surprise I, that's why i'm you. here i can't wait never seen it <clears throat> he like he's one of the biggest fans of lost ever and yeah, i gonna, hated it we don't talk about that we're not talking about that oh, okay though. john you, well, he you said always he gotta rub that in my no, eyes no, huh? no 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 he said he, he never you know, <laughs> said he never <laughs> seen you happy and he known you since the age of 14 i'm telling you on scott's tombstone it's just gonna say <laughs> eh yeah, exactly. That That's was it. fucking awesome. Whatever. It's really unfortunate that you couldn't see his facial expression on that. <laughs> like somebody was holding a piece of shit under his nose. <laughs> he likes lost. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So wait, before we get on into The Mandalorian, let, let's talk about Rivertown Theaters, bro. What's the next show? Uh, all right, so we have a Christmas show coming up. Awesome. Uh, written by local legend Ricky Graham. Cool. With uh, national celebrity drag queen Varla Jean Merman. They wrote this show. It's called Scrooge and Rouge. They wrote it years ago. And they haven't performed it since it was written and published like a decade ago. So they're all like all the original playwrights are coming back together and doing the show now. Wow. And the premise is it's set in like the 1900s at an old music hall and they're supposed to be doing a Christmas carol, but everybody in the company got food poisoning. So like <laughs> the last three actors have to get us through Christmas carol. So they have oh, to play wow. all the parts. Yeah, it's really it's a musical, it's really funny. That's good. Know, so How many vulgarities it. are in it? Zero vulgarities. Oh wow, okay. Not like the last show. Okay. Yeah, the last show. Um, it, it, it just we were having this conversation before we uh, went on to record here, but but they did a show that was um was it was a political uh, satire, and the word fuck was said eighty three times in this play. And, and apparently, and, old ladies have a problem with that. And so. that's it. Mm. The asses were as red as this state, motherfucker. This so the first <laughs> night. It, once people, once the word got out, it was all the all the you know degenerates were there, and we had a great time. And who's who's are in by again? I forgot. David Mamet. David Mamet. Yeah. Who I recently mean. has become an asshole? So like, uh, we couldn't win, yeah. but we had a good time. It was a good show. So, well, there it is. All yeah. right. He's always been a little salty, but good yeah, yeah, he's a thing. Well, let's move on to greener pastures here. Holy that's... shit, man! We watched something that we all liked, the verged on love, but but um, this is the Mandalorian, which is an original Star Wars television series done exclusively for Disney Plus. But before we get into The Mandalorian, I kind of want to go back in time. I want to go back to 2005 in an interview that was given by Rick McCallum, who is one of the associate producers of Lucasfilm. Before Ginger loved anything. he di Right. He directed, <laughs> well, he was the executive producer or the associate producer on the three Star Wars prequels, and he also was a hangover from Indiana Jones Chronicles on TV. God, I had a hangover after the first three prequels. Hey, oh. So, <laughs> so Rick McCallum, Rick McCallum goes to the uh, press and he tells him, "Okay, look, uh, we're going to come out with a Star Wars television show, and the way that we're going to describe, the way we're going to pitch, though, the way the show is going to um, be presented is, is that it's going to be a group of crime lords." that are trying to figure out how to hold on to everything after the Empire starts to slowly take over. So this television series is going to take place past Episode 3. And um, it was described as, as he described it, um, The Sopranos meets Deadwood in the Star Wars universe, um, which, yeah. I, which I 
doubt it would really turn out that way. Right. You know, considering what the prequels turned out to be. But hey, look, you never know. But one thing I always thought was cool, and regardless of how you feel about George Lucas or any of the parts of these Star Wars movies, he has always been a stickler for pushing cinematic technology. And that was the purpose of this television show. He was going to take Star Wars and he was going to show you how to make small, basically small motion pictures for television. And um, it went, this was something that was continued to be talked about all the way up to 2012, which is about, what, two years before the, the or, no, the year that the it was sold, that uh, Disney was sold right. to, um, to, to Lucas uh, that, that uh, Lucasfilm that was sold to Disney. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, so this television business has been around for a while. So Disney takes over, um, Netflix and streaming television series and original content becomes a thing in this time. You know, it, it ends up revolutionizing the television industry, you know, in a very short time. And now we end up with uh, The Mandalorian, which is um, fronted by uh, John Favreau, uh, uh, director of Iron Man, um, Acted in 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 a a, a plethora of movies. PCU, um, yeah, that included um, P- yeah, yeah, dude. He was he he was in PCU as as a young kid. He was in Chef. He was in Four Christmases. He was in Happy Swingers. Hogan. He was in Swingers. Swingers. He was in. That's when he kind of made a name for himself, right? Wasn't right. Swingers. Yeah. One of my favorite roles he's in. It's a it's a dumbass movie, but I love it. Is the replacements? He played. Yes, he played Bateman. Right. He was a yeah. Yeah, like he the played, psycho. Yeah, he was yeah. he was the defensive linebacker. Give me the ball, yeah. you know. So right. yeah, that was him. Yeah, so I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff, and now it's like he's this. Uh, well, he's also responsible for the the live action quote unquote Jungle Book and Lion. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. yeah, and he did that as well. And now it's like he's this this guy who was like kind of starring in like these kind of like you know um um kind of like cool daddy nerd movies or cool daddy hipster movies, and now he's like this prolific producer. So it's it's yeah. it's pretty uh, it's pretty amazing. He can you know? tell a story, and then um, joining up on him also is Dave Filoni, who is like kind of like the Padawan to George Lucas. He's responsible for Star Wars Rebels and um, Clone Wars, which is a lot of the uh, kind of top shelf animated projects for Lucasfilm. And now they're moving him into live action. And there's always been kind of like a uh, outcry from the fans that they wanted Filoni to have a lot more kind of creative control and direction within Lucasfilm. Well, it looks like that's happening. So, um, so yeah, all right, that that's all me. So let, let's uh, let's just talk about the uh, let let's talk about you guys and I, what you think about tweet? the Mandalorian. So I think this tweet sums it up. We can just stop the show. It said uh, the Mandalorian is like, what if Boba Fett ever did anything cool? Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm like yeah, pretty Thank much. Us, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what if Boba Fett like actually didn't get killed by a blind guy screaming his name? Right. You know. So right. I mean. There it is, but yeah, I mean, that seems it, to be George Lucas's thing: is creating really awesome antagonists and then wiping them out in the most humiliating ways. Exactly. Well, to be fair, I mean, George Lucas even said he was like, you know, had I known that Boba Fett was going to be this cool, I wouldn't have did that to him. Now, he had no idea. Well, that, he that had this, some idea. <laughs> well, I mean, he had some idea after Empire Strikes Back when we bought all the toys. The Boba Fett toys. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I think that the character, I think the thing with it is the character really got really rolling like when that expanded universe stuff started because right. the character was kind of a kind of a cult favorite amongst fans and then when they really expanded that character into I something know, man. Cool. I was I was a kid when all that came out and Boba Fett it was like the shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean I, I would I would argue that might be kind of the genesis of the expanded universe is people right. saying, I want to know more about this fucking guy. Yeah. Uh huh. You know? Anyway. There was a game, I don't remember which game it was, one of these Star Wars games that came out in the last few years where He's alive, flying okay. around. Yeah, and they say that that's that's a thing. Like he is alive. Well, uh, Pat Oswalt at the, one point, in the, I don't remember if he tweeted it or he talked about it, but uh, he basically described a scene in which, you know, you you see the Sarlacc pit, and then you see this sort of like half acid eaten armor arm come out of the or out of the pit, and everyone was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah." Yeah, Why I mean, not, you know, I, I mean, it he became canon that he did not die in the Sarlacc pit, but that's what I'm right. saying. I, like I don't think he died. Yeah. Well, they, you know, now it's like the they do this expanded universe, and is it really connected to the to the movies? You know, George Lucas, and and I, I actually have some some quotes by him um, saved here when it comes to that expanded universe. I mean, if they keep making because there's 
there's two camps. Some people are like, don't bring him back. And other people are like, oh, shit, maybe the Mandalorian is Boba Fett. If they keep making great episodes, I'm sure they'll figure well, out Well, somebody said that, back. what? No, go ahead. Oh, somebody said uh, that it was rumored that Boba Fett might make an appearance. And I just keep thinking, like, fuck Boba Fett. Yeah, like, I don't care anymore. Like, let's yeah. I'm, I'm let's good. talk about I'm good. the Mandalorian. Like, this dude is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm all on board with him. He did, in one episode, did way more than Boba Fett ever did. Like, let's go with that. I don't right. I don't care. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm with Scott. I don't even care to see anything that has ever been in Star Wars in this show. Yeah. Like, as far as the previous stuff is concerned... I don't need cameos by characters. I'm fine with with winks and nudges. Wait, we're not we're spoiling I'm, all this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Right, I mean, right. I'm okay with all that shit. I, I, dude, I don't need like I'm I'm fine with callbacks. I don't have to have like you don't have to beat me over the head with it. I I the, like seeing the races like Jawas. Oh, that was cool because it it means we're right. in Star Wars. That's familiar, but I don't need to see like a very specific person. No. Yeah. Okay. There's a few bounty hunters that are specific to the toys that I had that we saw in star and like in episode four yeah, like IG-88 but there's a like no but like uh, but I'm saying like th- those it's not they, like Luke's gonna show up like if right, we're just right. random I don't we don't know I don't anything about that them shit. either yeah. I, I don't want to see that and, and you know I mean talking to talking to uh, uh, one of the members of our sister show Scary Thoughts um, uh, Chad Lott Chad told me he said you know he said the first episode. He said I felt it had too many, like too many member berries in it. You know those South Park yeah. reference, right, but right, right. Member. But the thing with it is, is that I, I kind of agree with him in that. It, that I think that there was some shit in it that was like kind of like a little bit of overkill. But when it got into that second episode, I was like, "This is fucking great. This is really, really cool." I was kind of yeah. worried after seeing that shit in the first episode, like the eye coming out of the wall, like they had on Jabba's palace and. You know they're roasting the they're roasting the little court jester monkey uh, lizard on the spit and all that yeah. stuff. You know, like they they had like a lot of familiar noises, like his ship breaks down and you have the the wheezing of the hyperdrive it engine. Is still, down. That's, that's, that's the, the universe, world. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought that that shit was a little excessive. It didn't ruin it for me. I thought it was great. I loved it. I just wish there was less of that shit. Well, guess what? In the episode two and episode three of Mandalorian, it is it's beautiful. And I think it's going to be one of the things, and especially having Filoni on board, what made those Clone Wars and Rebels episodes so great was the fact that the sh- it built its own mythology. Those shows mm. built their own mythology yeah. within the Star Wars mythology, and that show is this show is going to do that, and it's going to be fucking good, really good. Yeah, I, I, my only disagreement is I feel like there are just as many member berries in the other two episodes, but it didn't bother so me I. at all. And yeah, I just like, think that's... Like, well, that's world building. And it, exactly. it was enough that it's like, okay, feel comfortable that it's still the thing you kind of know. Yeah, exactly. But don't worry about all the stuff you, if you don't know it. Like, just, yeah. just go on this journey of this one dude. And and, and I, I think it expanded on the berries, so to speak. Like, yeah. you know, seeing him ride in the, the Jawa vehicle is super fucking cool. You know? Yeah, see, but that to me, that's fine. What I'm talking about the member berry shit is, is some of the sound effects you hear something that you hear like callbacks to some of like the phrases from alien stuff that's used in other movies like Utini. like that kind of shit like I, I thought that some of that stuff I was like you know I mean dude in other words your droid door no- door knocker is going to be the exact same thing as job of the hut I mean okay but they're on the same planet right if it could no it's not tatooine so I mean if it could if it could look uh. if if it could like look like that but have a different mm-hmm. voice I'd be cool with that. It's kind of like oh, all oh, C-3PO okay. units sound like Anthony Daniels. You know what I mean? Right, I'm, right, right. That's what you're saying. Just give it a little bit yeah. of variation. But like I said, man, I'm nitpicking that shit. Dude, okay. it's perfect. It, it, the show is fucking awesome, dude. I love the only, it. The thing that bums me out about this show... Here we go. Here we go. ...is that it isn't the newness going forward. There is still a, an episode 7, 8, 9 that happened. Like, this is so much better than what the movies... Yeah, but you're free to ignore those things. I am. I'm yeah. just saying, like, you know, with Solo and Rogue One and Episode 7 and 8 and maybe 9, who knows, but this is so much better than any of that stuff. And I right. mean, I like 7 and 8, but this is just, this is way better yeah. than anything I've seen. See, but, uh, but that's the thing, though. I'm not really worried about this show being hamstrung by the events of those movies because this is something, first of all, that takes place... 25 years before these these other movies take place and it's something that takes place in like a different corner of the galaxy you know i mean i look at all these old ex-imperial warlords 
all these guys, for all we know, could continue to exist in in that you know exist in that life outside of a new order. You know, a, right. a, of a reestablished empire, they could be sitting there and saying, "Hey, look, man, we got a, we got our little level of shit over here. We're talked away. They're look, they're fighting wars in the core worlds. We're out here in the outer rim. We, yeah. we don't fuck all that. There's, there's still the big bad and the force, like the Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah and and that's storm, be. I mean, like, there's stormtroopers. Yeah, you know. But here's my thing. I think that uh, this is the first time that I remember that you get something outside of the. The, the movie trilogies totally that aren't handicapped by like all right this is 10 years before this happens so we have to tie this into this right this is the thing it's like it just it's whenever it is and I mean we know yeah. what it is but like we're not worried about Rogue One building to a new hope or right. you know, yes. it's just it's what it is it's like independent of all that shit so don't worry about it and it's kind of refreshing to like not have to put no, puzzle pieces together I agree yeah yeah I mean it, I I that's been my wish since all of this. And I mean, I can go back to the old shows and, and when we first started talking about episode seven, man, look, I just want something new. I'm tired of, I mean, look, we're sitting here paying attention to the same time frame around events that roll around the same characters. So he, in this, this show made me understand people's complaints about solo. Yeah. Because, yeah, like yeah, I didn't yeah, no get doubt. it before because I'm like, I enjoyed Solo. I thought it was fun. But I see that people, and maybe you, was like, I just want a Han Solo adventure story, not let's put all the pieces of Han Solo together in one movie that lead us to the thing we know about. Is that right. is that correct? Yeah. 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 All right, because that's the thing I never put together before because I'm like, oh, it, it did everything we thought it was going to do. But what people wanted was like, I don't care about any of that shit. Just have them go on a fun adventure. Like, right. And that's cool. And that's this proves that you can do that. It also proves what they should have done in episode seven is not like we've been saying, don't bring these other characters back. Just show us some new people. Yeah, do whatever. We, well, we they, got it. They did that. But the problem with it is, is that they, they fucked up with stupid shit. That's their problem. They gave us all new characters, but the problem with I it mean, is they, nobody cares about them. Well, they gave us new characters, but also the old characters were still there. Yeah, and they were so yeah. overemphasized. Like, oh, Han Solo has to die, and Princess Leia is such a thing, and Luke Skywalker's here too, but he's now a ghost. But is he a ghost? We don't know. Well, like, this, wait, it wasn't wait, a trilogy. And Yoda's there. Time, time out. Time trilogy. out. Three weeks, Rise of Skywalker comes out. Why don't we hold that conversation when we review that? It's fine. That? I'm just yeah. saying. But I'm not, just but, saying but, but, the but, Mandalorian is what these people... That series could have And been. I'm glad this wasn't the Boba Fett TV show. Oh, my because God. Because it's the Mandalorian. Right. It's like, so it's whoever it is. Yeah. Yeah, we know for a... I mean, we don't know for a fact, but I mean, I was watching some interviews last night of all of the cast and... and um all of the cast and directors and all that stuff, and they interviewed um, uh, Pedro Pascal, who plays the Mandalorian. Yeah, he's so good. And he says in the interview... They ask him point blank. They say, was this character Boba Fett? He says, no, this is this character's name. And he reveals the Mandalorian's name in the interview. Oh, yes. shit. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah, so, name. I mean, yeah, he has an actual name. So I mean, that's not much of a spoiler because it's almost irrelevant, you know? Well, I mean, if you... Unless it's a big reveal in the finale. I, you know, I never... I am. But I don't... Right. I never expected it. Like, going into this show, I never expected it to be Boba Fett. Yeah, no, like, no. I, I didn't either. either. Yeah. Uh, me either. So... It, I'm glad it's. I'm this glad other it's guy. not. As, right now, right. I understand. Yeah, can I talk about my one quibble? Yeah, sure. I, I text. That's Scott. why we're here. I text Scott. I'm like, could Carl Weathers ever act? <laughs> yeah, he's he's fucking terrible. He's, yeah, he's, he's not yeah. good in that third episode. I'm like, just just Carl Weathers. Just he's like trying to do this thing. And I'm like, what's his voice? He's great. Get in, Ernie Hudson. <laughs> he's fine yeah. in the first want, episode. He's he's fine well, he in the like first episode. Like, yeah, it, 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 but that much. second episode, the third one, when he's trying to like basically negotiate I was with like, him. Holy you know? shit! Oh yeah, he's yeah. How about he, that Nick Nolte. Oh, yeah. he's great, isn't he? But uh, it, like uh, yeah. Your boy Weathers is acting like uh, people made fun of Kirk or, or, or right, William right. Shatner acting, you know, and, like just overacting. Or what was it? Uh, not Guardians 2, but Thor, when they're making fun of Star-Lord. You're using his voice. I'm not using yeah, his yeah. voice. Like, like, he's, using like the, the he's using a Thor voice. put on thing. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It just se it seems real phony and artificial. It just sucks me yeah. out of the moment. You know? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really appreciate his acting in that moment. It's really sad because I mean, dude, like, I, for the kind of character he's playing, I mean, man, you go look at him in movies. I mean, even movies that are not good, 
but he had that intensity, man. I mean, I don't know if y'all ever saw it, but Force 10 from Navarone, he was in that movie. Mm-hmm. And um, that's another Harrison Ford right. movie, yeah. when, you know, and he was, he was in that. that and he was fucking intense, man. I mean, Scott it, just texts back, he was Apollo Creed. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but but, but, like, but he wasn't Apollo Creed in this. No, I mean, no, no. no. I mean, it's badassery. No. And he's just like. You look at him as, as uh, Dylan and Predator. I mean, he's a, he's, it's you like know, he's I mean. doing Shakespeare in the park, man. It's like. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that whole exchange that he has with Schwarzenegger and, and Predator when he's sitting there, you know, I, I did, you know, I did to do, you know, I did what I needed to do to get the job done. Right. And th- and if I had to throw you into the meat grinder, that's the way it is. And I mean, dude, like the intensity, I would imagine that would be more of the grief card. Maybe he just wasn't directed right. That I mean, could you know, be. Like, and that's part of it uh, is that he wasn't he wasn't suited for the material. That happens because he looks great. Yeah, yeah. But, he does. Yeah. But I mean, like you know, Zemeckis directed a whole third of Back to the Future before he was like our main character is not suited for this film. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, sure. Eric Stoltz is not the guy. Right. It's got to be Michael J. Fox. So I mean, it happens to the best of them, you know. And at least he's not the Mandalorian. Yeah, correct. Right? That third episode though had like I felt like a little kid, and I love that they're like mm-hmm. thirty minutes long. Yeah, because I, I know. always I always settle in for an hour because I don't remember. And after 30 right. minutes, I'm like, oh, come on. Like, I'm ready for the next one. But it had, yeah. like, I mean, that Jawa fight was so brilliant and, like, funny. And then, like, <laughs> when all the Mandalorians come shooting over the buildings, I was, like, well, like, I was cheering. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. Let's- I, uh, maybe I told, I think I told, I know I told y'all. You told about Iron yeah. Man 3. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not the Iron, well, yeah, obvious Iron Man 3 nod. But uh, I was gonna, I was watching it like, oh, this is, this is good. Everybody's talking shit about how great it is. And so I'm like, all right, this is going to be good. And then, then he does his little trick with his little super gun. I was like, all right, that's good. And then, then he, you know, wipes out all the Raiders in the street. I'm like, okay, this is good, but it's not awesome. Whatever. And then they have their little monologue and I'm like, okay. And then the fucking guys show up. I'm like, (gasps) yeah, yeah, Uh right. Holy shit. Yeah. I think, I think what makes the show just, just fantastic is the fact that it, it goes back to what Lucas originally had intended. It's it's spaghetti westerns and samurai movies. Yeah. And, I mean, there's direct it's, callbacks to all yeah. that stuff. I mean, even to the point to where in the third episode, Carl Weathers takes the shot in the chest with the with the armor plate under yeah, his shirt. Yeah, everybody saw that coming. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it was it, Hit it, me in it's the Bible. Really, so really cool. Question. I mean, it's, well, it's somebody, awesome. Somebody did a, a comparison of like Lone Wolf and Cub in The Mandalorian and did like some side by sides. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it. Lone Wolf and Cub is a, it's right. a samurai story. I mean, that's there and, and uh, okay. very highly touted comic book series. I mean, it's like an 18 chapter beginning and end story. And it was written as one story, tons of comparisons to Lone Wolf and Cub, of course. Yeah. Mando, Mando being the the Ronin and and you know the child is Baby Yoda. You know, I mean, it's a her cub is Baby Yoda. So, so my really question cool is, do you think that they want us to think that the Mandalorian shot him there on purpose, or that it was just incidental? Um, I, I think, think it's, it's on purpose. Me yeah. too. That hey, was my hunch. Here's yeah. here's my question. I don't know because I didn't look it up on the internet. Is how 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 does this relate to? Like Django being a clone, making clones, and does this have any? See, I don't clone? think that's this. Does it matter? Thing? No. I, I from what I gather, well, it's like I don't you know, can. I'm not being a smart ass. I mean, does it matter? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, no, I, I see what you're asking. His, but it's will like, we get his backstory about you know what's the, going on? In this on? last episode, they talk a lot about like making the choice to join. Like it's almost like the Church of the Mandalorian. Right. So like it's no longer like a clone thing. Like you can choose to like live this well, way of life. But, but the Mandalorians were never the clones. They were what they, they're one of those guys who was an overperformer was cloned to make stormtroopers. So right. that, and, but, but cloning is an issue because the guy who brought, I Dr. Mean, obviously Dr. They, Pershing is the name of the character in, right. in the show, he, but he's got some insignia on there. That's been sort of peppered throughout the star Wars films right. that, looping into the cloning technology and you know my my assumption is you know the big debate has been is that yoda this baby yoda a clone or not i think it's the real deal which raises my question when i first saw episode the first episode which is who did yoda fuck which i guess is yeah Yanni. i don't want to think about it um but uh <laughs> well yoda i mean he fucked a gremlin based on the ears right he yeah. fucked a gremlin but the thing is is that uh that guy was obviously mining the midichlorians or whatever to some you know dark I, purpose i'll be disappointed Apparently we're getting the inf- like we're getting the answer yeah I, that's that, yeah that's yeah the big reveal I i'll think. be disappointed if if this ends up being a clone of yoda 
I'm really hoping. I, I that, don't think it's a clone. I'm hoping it's its own. So, yeah. I, I think, think they it's just a, want to clone or yeah. use his blood to make some For, other. Th- we'll just have to find out what purpose. Now, now, but here's the other question, and and this is what I've been th- been wondering is, did Pershing extract the material before Mandalorian rescued him, or did Mandalorian get there before? he extracted or was he it extracted it, already he, it was extracted mm. already i think he said if it weren't for me he'd be dead already you okay. know what i mean so i my assumption was is that he figured out a humane way to so take our, the materials because i'm figuring I, I'm, I'm thinking in a way i'm like well dude if he escapes with him and they got what they needed i mean are they really going to have that big of a boner to kill him if they didn't get what they needed, now you got to go fucking chase right, so, him down and get the and get the kid so you can get the shit like you didn't get to get. Something or, that they don't yeah. want people to know they had. But so what I'm are they that getting we from him? What are they getting about? from him? They're like, either getting. I mean, they're either getting his DNA or they're getting the midichlorians. I mean, those are the only two things I think that they're going to get. I mean, right? That's. I mean, it's a. What it's race a, is Yoda? Yeah, there is. It has never been revealed what well, like, race is he, he is. is he's the Mystery. only one or are there others no. of him well there are a handful that has always been that's always been left unanswered and favreau when he wrote this he told feloni what he was going to do and feloni you know saying well yeah this is a great idea let's get george involved and see what he thinks so lucas actually came and helped them with that whole oh, thing. Wow, if George okay. is involved, so, it's midichlorians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's your answer to that. So, I mean, well, I don't know. I think that the, I, I think that George Lucas got the newspaper across the nose, so to speak. Yeah. Which I have, which I, I have zero sympathy for him. Yeah. I mean, dude, look, if yeah. I sell you something and you give me a lot of money for it, like a lot of fucking I got money, billions look, of dollars, Gary. Look, I'm going to sell you the keys to my car, dude. And look, and and look, give, look, give me four billion for it. And, yeah. and and look, now that you have my car, this is how I want you to drive it. Exactly. You can tell yeah. me to go fuck myself. I well, mean, I that's what yeah. it is. You I know? think it's. I always think it's funny when people out Star Wars George Lucas. Oh yeah. Like oh, they're yeah. they're better at telling stories in his universe than. But he is. isn't that isn't that yeah. kind of cool though? That I think it's great. But he created something that can live on way past him. him. Well, yeah, yeah. like I mean, that to me. Back right. To, he's he's like, often the problem. I understand <laughs> that, but. You know, but it's pretty crazy. I mean, this this is the shining example. I hope he's not listening, to especially me. when it comes to fans. I just gave him a compliment. <laughs> this is the shining example of creating something that is so relevant that it is no longer yours anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's right. that's what this is. It it, it becomes kind of like you kind of take ownership of it. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's the thing. And you kind of have this idea in your mind of how you want things to go. Yeah. Because it's kind of like yours now. In my mind, it's it, John Favreau's Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, this this but, version, but Star yeah. Wars, like, I had the moment of, like, I, I put it on for my three-year-old uh, a couple of days ago. And I'm like, all right, it's time. You're, you're at the age. And he's not. He didn't care. Uh-huh. Like, oh, yeah, right. It's become a thing where, like, parents hand this down to their children now. <laughs> like, well, so you're going to watch Star Wars My now, kid found know? a t-shirt with little baby Yoda on it. And she's like, oh, this is so adorable. I want to get this. I'm like, you ain't getting shit. So you watch The Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I still want it. Did she okay. watch it? Yep. It's watch it with me. Yeah. Let's watch it. Did she watch it? Not yet. Oh. She's, she's like, watched like half my... a first episode. Kate fell it. in love with it, my girlfriend immediately like as soon as she saw baby yoda she was in 200 hey, percent. that's, that's good marketing let's real fast yeah. on the marketing and we can then you can throw the subject away you remember how bad star wars toys were doing with movies episodes seven and eight how yeah, people we just, just oh, they're, about that. Yeah. they're still yeah. doing bad yeah they are doing bad how fucking genius is this for them to throw out a baby yoda and go you know what you're gonna buy our toys and you're gonna like it. Like who is well, not gonna buy? Yeah, a everybody Baby Yoda wants Baby Yoda, and it's genius that they didn't release it sooner. John Favreau, it. exactly. They well, created the demand, and suddenly it's like, all right. You know why? Huh? Favreau, Favreau told them. He said, "Look, Don't there's no this. surprise in anything anymore, and we want surprise. This is big. This is huge. Nobody has ever tackled this plot line before, and it was always kind of considered taboo in Lucasfilm when George was doing it. Well, now we're gonna do it." But if you release a toy, here's the problem. Toy catalogs 
come up with descriptions of things to sell to vendors. They see, spoiled we're movies, a bunch yeah. of we're Lego, a bunch Lego's of fucking, been fucking look, us for years. Like yeah. we're a bunch of fucking nerds, and we assume that oh, Star Wars is so sacred, everybody knows everything about it. Nobody knows any fucking thing about it when it comes to these suits, corporate raider motherfuckers. They don't know. Dude, the Marvel Lego toys are at Target before the movie comes out. So yeah, you have to not walk down that aisle because right. my kid and always wants to look at Legos. I'm like, well, we know who's in it. You know, yeah, right. right. And, and and that's what ends up being the deal. You know, and and that's what Favreau said directly. The thing he says, it's to the point now, man, you cannot keep anything secret anymore. So I went to Lucasfilm Marketing and told them, you cannot make any merchandise revolved around Baby Yoda. You can't even talk about it until this show drops. And as a result of that, look what's happening. I can't remember the last time Star Wars being this viral. Yeah, right. It is and fucking viral. And dude, like, Baby Yoda, it really it is it's like it's memeable. It's, it's like, like a the phenomenon. Yeah. It's the screaming woman with the white cat. Oh yeah, no, there's Dude, already, yeah. there's already a ton of them. You know how many yeah. fucking fi- five year old me memes I've seen with the baby Yoda? You yeah. know what I mean? Dude, yeah. there's like gajillion of them. You know, I mean I but, only have one quibble actually, and it's I mean it's super granular. But when uh Baby Yoda revealed himself to have the force I feel like they should not sh- have shown the shot of his hand. I think they should have shown that rhino charging him and then stopping and then levitating and then revealed it. That's well, my, oh, like, like it's t- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super ticky tack. I think the you thing I mean? with it I was is, still is excited. That, don't get me wrong. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that away on that one. Baby Yoda is still probably a very baseline force user. And the mm-hmm. thing with it is, is that he has to use the hand as a focus. No, he's to saying use just don't reveal yeah, that just he's the reveal, one doing yeah, it. Exactly. Suddenly the rhino stops. You're like, what the fuck happened? And then right. you cut to then baby show Yoda. the hand. Oh, and then okay, spin okay, all right, I got you. you. Know. So you're talking an editing error. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I mean, just an editing. I choice. think it's really cool how like Baby Yoda doesn't speak and the Mandalorian wears a helmet, but you still get so much emotion from exactly. those two characters. It's brilliant. Yeah, like the way yeah. they'll just like hang on the Mandalorian for a second and then he moves. I'm like, man, it's like it's such good storytelling. Yeah, I mean, you like. Because uh, I know that show's been knocked by some people saying we're not seeing enough of his real face. Oh fuck it's off! Like, That's the point. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. Then you obviously thought V for Vendetta sucked, and you Go can watch fuck Friends. right off. Yeah, exactly. Watch yeah. Friends. But uh, what I loved was when he went back when he was about to leave, and just in his body language, you could tell he was like he's going back. Yeah, it's such a great. God, yeah. yeah, it's that that third episode is is fantastic. Yeah. It's it's so well done. It's really good. I watched it again today. You know, just to kind of freshen myself yeah. up on this episode. And yeah. I mean, there's little subtle stuff in it that happens. See, one thing about Scott, like Scott sits there and he's like, "Man with this, man with that." What I love oh, about the fact is, fair. if you go back and you watch it again, and you watch that scene where he has like the entire bounty hunting community trying to take him out. I mean. The motherfucker uses everything at his disposal to try to survive. Oh, I mean, no, dude, I stun rifle, the, you, his vaporizer rifle. The I mean, fire. dude, stands up and like tries to flame everybody. I mean, yeah. dude, it's awesome. I love the um. I thought throwing the kitchen sink was a little on the nose. Eh, you know, I love, dude. I love when <laughs> he. <laughs> I love when he goes into to rescue the kid, and when he's walking out, and the stormtroopers. The, right before the the whistling bird thing, he has two stormtroopers that like one at his back and one at his front, and he does the whole like total like Hong Kong gun uh, gun fu turn, right. you know, and it just like yeah. fucking like snipes the guy and just blasts him. I'm like, dude, this is just fucking. Amazing, I love that man. shot of him walking away and just poof, just another oh, shot yeah, for dude. good measure. So, fucking oh, great, that. dude. Let's talk about that for a second. Maybe the most violent Star Wars I've seen. Shit, yeah, yeah. But how tasteful for? I mean, not I'm, graphic, not gratuitous, be, not yeah. graphic. And not like not gratuitous, dude. At all. When he barbecued that fucking stormtrooper, I, I was like, "Damn!" Right, but how like, about when he's, he's like stars. a true samurai? Like he didn't want to fight. Right. He was all right, well. I'm gonna fight if I have to, but like he was trying not to. Like he stabs yeah. that dude, dude. But they uh, don't. There's no show of blood. You just know. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. backed into it and he's dead. Right. Let's dude, see he, Tarantino's version. Yeah, yeah he, right. he burnt, <laughs> dude. He, it's good, and I, and I tell you another I thing. That film, by the way. Another thing I, I love too, and I can see a, another thing that people are shitting on that I really love. The soundtrack is fucking awesome. I dude. love yeah. it. Yeah, it's great. How are they shitting on it? Oh, it 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 doesn't sound like Star Wars. No, dude. that's the whole point. It just sounds weird in your mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like fucking spaghetti western yeah. sci-fi movie music, dude. I mean, it's it's good. I also love when like big time nerds get like a little like, 
and like the fact that Brian Posehn was in the first episode. Yeah. Because he's such a Star Wars nerd and he yeah. had like a little cameo. I was like, good for him. Me, yeah. Good for I was, him. I was in and the like same he, place. And like he put this huge tweet out about like like the the best moment of my life. I'm like, oh, I'm part of canon. Yeah. Favreau yeah. is one of these kind of eclectic guys to where he runs in so many different circles and he's a big MMA guy. And I didn't know this. Uh, uh, Chad Lott once again pointed this out to me. The guy in the first episode who's trying to steal Horatio Sands' gills from him—he's an him. MMA dude. Yeah. He's an MMA fighter. He's like a like uh, a like a top bill guy. You want so, MMA so fighters involved in some kind of Star Wars underworld? Well, I mean, anyway. look, look at Gina Carano. I yeah, mean, that's what yeah. I was about to say. She is. She is confirmed in the next episode. Yeah. So so this Friday we'll get to see Gina Carano. And join then after the, that is the episode Dave Filoni directs. I'm really looking forward to that. He one. directed the pilot. Oh, did he? He directed the pilot. Rick um, Fayuima directed the second episode. That's the guy that did Dope and was supposed to do the Flash movie. Okay. Uh, right. He did the second episode, and then Deborah Chow did this previous episode, and Deborah Great Chow job. is going to direct the Obi-Wan series. A good choice. I don't know who's doing the next one. I'm interested. Uh, I want to see the Taika Waititi episode. What's her face episode. from uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, I think. Is she directing. does one. She's um, doing the next one. Oh, she. All right. So she's and then a, it's going to be Filoni again. Oh, so That's Filoni did two. I guess so, yeah. Okay, and then I think um, Taika Waititi did one, and then there was another There was, he was another also director. the voice of IG-11, which, yeah, which was, was interesting. I mean, I would have never guessed that in a million years. And he years. was in Rick and Morty last week. Oh, was he? Yeah. Do you oh, want great. to develop an app? It was, <laughs> that's him. Favreau was also the uh, Favreau was the saluting Mandalorian that saluted him. Right. Uh, he did the voice that challenged him inside of the... Uh, yeah. Inside of the um the 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 blacksmith shop there, he did a fine this has job. me excited for Obi Wan. Yeah, oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. A quick little aside. Uh, I'm not. I'm not yet excited. I'm not sold on Obi Wan yet. I, I, I see I'm, why. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. with you, Scott. I, I, I th- those opinions come you've been, later. You've been hurt by Solo. Yeah. I understand. What I have. You're I just I just read in a Business Insider that The Mandalorian is the number one most d- in demand streamed series oh i believe it. it beat it beat out stranger things really yeah. i believe it it, be- yeah, yeah. it has it dude, beat out it's... game of thrones well game of thrones wasn't number one. Oh, it wasn't or breaking no. bad yeah we're breaking, or breaking bad. Bad. i mean it doesn't <laughs> surprise me because i mean man dude it's it's gotta be like it's just fun it's fucking memed so much it's like right. i see if i if i scroll through facebook or twitter or instagram yeah. It is. It's like it's an. Everywhere. It's like an every ten fucking posts. You know, what I mean, dude, it's it's like all over the Baby place. Baby Yoda is a fucking incredible Muppet. Oh, I it's mean, awesome. Yeah, I just. I love the shit. Every out of Baby little Yoda. bit of it. It just. Uh, Can we talk about one last thing? He's like yeah. a little dude. He's like a little coon ass man. He goes yeah. and tries to catch frogs. Like yeah. I, t- I already yeah. told yeah. Uh, told Karen when I buy Avery her Baby Yoda, I'm gonna get her some camouflage Crocs <laughs> to put on it. So. <laughs> I love the the illustrations during the credits. Yes. Because yeah. yes. it's like, all right, I get to relive the episode. But I remember as a kid, I had books from the original totally. Star Wars that the had those illi- drawings. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, like... There's a background to those drawings. Well, well, let's let the audience hear it. The background to the drawings <laughs> are is that Carl Weathers and both um, Pedro Pascal, when they walked into the meetings to get hired, mm-hmm. all of that is the concept art that was taped to the walls. Oh, sweet. So oh, when damn. they walked in, they got, the to see, yeah. they got to see that shit. Yeah. And they were like, this is what it's going to look like. So I can imagine when you walk in and see that, you're like, fuck. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, not only that, this is what it's going to look like. How ambitious is that? This yeah. is what right. it's going to look like. I'm sure Pedro and Pascal was it. like, fuck, we're shooting in the desert. Yeah. You know? Like, shit, yeah. no, I don't know. Everything I read from him, that dude, the first, yeah. that dude, he said he was, he's like, shit, man. He's like, I, like I walked in and it's the same thing. He's like, he's, hey, Pedro, we want you to like be in this show. And he's like, Man, you want me to be an alien? You want me to be like a droid? What do you want me to do? They're like, no, dude, we want you to be the Mandalorian. And he's like, (laughs) fucking A! (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he gets to cash in on all the promise we thought Boba Fett would deliver. Right. Yeah, he he said every, like, Star Wars fantasy that I had when I was 10 years old was all relived when I walked and looked in the mirror and I was wearing the costume for the first time, you know? Yeah. So I, love, it, I love the process of him like building up his armor, too. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean by mythology, and that's right. what makes it so great. Like, the whole thing where you have the Mandalorians, and that's, like, there's all these little things that are happening in the show that we need to learn about. It, we Now, apparently, there's a Mandalorian purge 
where the Empire went and killed them off. Yeah. So now all, all right. these Mandalorians That's are right, in hiding, hiding. Yeah. and they have these little dens where it's a group of them, and they're trying to like keep their traditions alive in secret. And you have like this armor smith that has this like Spartan looking Mandalorian helmet and like, you know, furred armor, you know, with like animal fur all over it and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's it's almost like this kind of like uh She's a badass. Like Greek, you know, Greek that- Roman mythology, you know, type yeah. mythological warrior what? that that works as the armor smith. Is that not his that's not his mom? I thought maybe that was his mom. I don't mom. think it's his mother. I think I the think flashbacks, so. his mother and father got killed in those okay, flashbacks. Yeah, okay, okay. they're dead. Yeah. By, uh, but he always donates to the, to the families all right, so, or whatever. Yeah. So. What, is, what is that? He's, he donates... I think it's like all the orphan kids who they're so like... So what happens is, yep. is that in the backstory, the Mandalorian armor is built out of something called Bexar. Okay, Bexar is a metal that can actually... Def- that can absorb shots from lasers and can even take hits from a lightsaber but the thing with it is is that as that armor takes damage that bexar wipes off so what happens is according to the show is that the man you know the the imperials got all the bexar during the purge so now these imperials are using that to draw these mandalorians into service to do these bounties for them so Uh, so now he's got that bexar and when he walks into that thing he says look i got all this bexar look basically here's my tribute to the clan and here's yeah. mine to keep my own shit to make my own armor. So they're making their own armor. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. creating okay. their own like, armor. Yeah. 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 Right. So they're not using it as... But they also said like they can only leave the den like one at a time or a couple at a time. Yeah, they right. I mean, point of that too. So they don't, we don't know how many there actually are because you never see a group of them. And that's so the that's other... why it was such a big deal that they all came out. And that's right. already starting they're some problems. Ass. Yeah. That's already starting some problems with Star Wars fans because they're sitting there and they're like, well, wait a minute, this... What is the thing with not being able to take off your helmet and all that shit? Well, you know, I mean, it's it, like anonymity. I would think. Yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, it, I feel like that's a character quirk. I don't. I mean, I think that could be. No, and they, they, they ask, "Have you taken off your helmet?" No, like that was part oh, of the things they talked well, I mean, about. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's almost like the Watchmen, how they all wear the, masks. You know, well, yeah, but that doesn't line up with rebels. But I guess maybe a lot of shit. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't have to line up with rebels because rebels takes place before this. Well, maybe they're a more right. extreme so, right. version of it too, like. This tribe well, I mean, well, I mean but, but the Mandalorians were taking their helmets off all the fucking time in that show. That's that. I mean, that's my only. Maybe qualm. since the purge, they don't. Maybe, maybe. I think. Probably. I think maybe yeah. the point is like we're trying to. We don't want people to know how many of us there are. Right. So you can point. never take off your helmet. We can't leave in groups. Like right, if right. They only kind of see one or two of us. Maybe that's all there is. You know. I think another thing that's pretty cool too is that there's these kind of like simple little pieces of dialogue that to the hardcore Star Star Wars fans that know about the reputation of the Mandalorian characters, it gives us those cool little things. But what's great is is that it also works to tell kind of mundane fans what's going on. Line from the second episode that's great. Hey, look, we're going to go deal with the Jawas. You have to put down your guns. I'm not putting down my guns. It's against my religion. I'm like, that's right. fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. You know, I mean. They're a complete warrior, you know. It's the and and I, I just think it's so great that you you think about these old warrior traditions. You know, you think about these kind of like the Spartans and the, you know, the Spartans and the and the Roman centurions and these characters that were hard trained for war, even to the point to where the helmets kind of represent the Mandalorian right. helmet. But now you bring it sci-fi to where like. Yeah, man, flame launchers and rocket propellers and, and grappling hooks and jet packs and all this shit. Yeah. There's so many different hidden weapons and variants. This motherfucker has a rifle that disintegrates people. I mean, yeah. dude, sick. I, I mean... And help me out with this, too. I did notice that, like, the Mandalorian helmets sort of look like the new Imperial helmets in a way. The way that the new well, helmets kind of look. The When the Mandal- when when Django was cloned when the clone troopers are based off of Django Fed in the prequels. Mm-hmm. If you notice, the clone trooper helmets rep- kind of are reminiscent of Mandalorian helmets. Okay. All right, but they eventually they end up kind of like you know polymorphing into or, or, or evolving into the stormtroopers that you see in All the right. original trilogy. And um, Giancarlo Esposito is also going to be playing one of these Imperial yeah. warlords. He actually, his Stormtrooper uh, regiment is the Death Trooper style that Krennic had in Rogue One. Oh, nice. They're the black armored troopers. Cool. I like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty neat. So, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, for 30-minute episodes, man, I, 
I love man. It's 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 like nineteen forties and fifties serials, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, dude, it's 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 like the thing that inspired George Lucas to do this to begin right. with, right? Yeah. But, but what's good about the episode is it's like you can almost walk into it and watch it, and you're like, I, I kind of understand what's going on. You know, it's kind of like the stories that the, the the stories are kind of like they're, they're they're packaged in the episode. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like following, all right, I got to get to point A to point B. Okay, well, now we got to point A to point B. Now we're going to go B to C, and it's locked in there. It's not like they leave a whole lot of shit open. Right. It's like the old Flash Gordon. It's like, yeah. yeah. You can walk into the middle of it and kind of watch one and still have an idea as to what's going on. I will say this, like having watched, like just recently watched episode four, I mean, just think back, like no one had ever seen anything like that. It's so crazy how groundbreaking that was, like. A lot of the shit we take for granted, but for the time, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, what the? How did that even happen? You know, so crazy. Did you guys explode with laughter when the first Jawa got vaporized? I exploded oh, yeah. with a lot of laughter yeah. during the Jawa <laughs> episode. Exactly. There was a lot. Oh, the, the the thing that made me laugh the hardest in the Jawa episode was when they opened up the side hatches and started throwing <laughs> junk at him. I was right. like, dude, that's fucking awesome. And I like how they kept cutting to the like just the, the little baby Ryota stroller just kind of following yeah. along. Like, yeah, I'm pissed that they broke the fucking stroller. They threw away i was like shit man he needs his he needs his little he needs his little fucking you know car seat man that was a little odd to me like this dude is there to protect this little baby uh baby yoda and then he goes chase the jawas to get parts for a ship like we couldn't leave well he was yeah but the uh, the stroller's like right there like he's i get it but you know well he's not a good parent i mean he doesn't really he doesn't want to give a shit about that kid yeah at that point no i got instincts kick in just yeah but uh i I also so enjoyed the way they heckled uh, heckled him for oh yeah, not yeah. being able to speak. Jawa. He couldn't speak their language. Yeah, that was great. I mean, <laughs> he tried to torch him. But I think that's what makes it good. Is that what makes it so natural? Is is that it's like that old Star Wars movie to where everything is painted with very wide brushes. You don't need these big extravagant explanations of things. Right. He fe- the re- look. You sat there and when he sits in, there's so much emotion with this guy that's in a helmet, and you sit there and you look at him and when you sit there, you're like, dude, he's going to go back and get him. He's going right. after him. But what's great about it is it's just that simple little beautiful moment. This baby Yoda saves his fucking life. Right. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. He's like, man, he saved my life. I got to go save his. I yeah. can't. You know what it I reminds can't... me of? Samurai Jack. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Right. Yeah. It's a lot yes. like that. It's been a long time since I've seen that. But like not a lot of dialogue. Like right. Beautiful imagery. Cool shit. Like... And incidentally, that animator ended up doing a couple of episodes Clone of War, Clone yeah. Wars, a Jenny Clone Wars series. Yeah. He did a Clone War series. He did like based, the original one. Yeah, yeah, that was based on his style. The Clone War series that came afterward that was done by Filoni isn't even associated with right, what he right. did. No, he just did like a cool run of it, like the way he, he animates. Did. I have those. Yeah, he's like a Dexter, he did Dexter's Laboratory. He did a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah. G- Gendy Kart- uh, Tartakovsky yeah. is, his, is his name. So. And a fine job he did, but good call. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, man, I mean, I can't uh, wait for the rest of it. Well, Maybe I can't wait for the rest, and and we'll we'll uh, we'll kind of end it with this. Um, we'll we'll end it with this with this here. As far as moving forward in the future, there's a lot of controversial shit that goes on in Lucasfilm amongst fans and all that stuff. I, look, everybody has their opinions. I know a lot of people a lot of people want to pull up all of this SJW shit when it comes to Star Wars, but look, I'm just going to lay it out the way it is. All of that crap aside, whatever your opinions are of that, look, when it comes to these new trilo- this new trilogy, it was not handled fucking properly. It was not written well. It's not really good. And now mm-hmm. the thing with it is, is we're seeing the finale to something that was poorly fucking planned. I know Scott's opinion of Solo and Rogue One, but I will say this. Those movies are better than episode seven, eight, and will be better than episode nine. The reason why is because it tells a focused story that right. is done by one person. Yeah. This other thing, you can't sit here and take a property like this and say like, okay, well, look, this is the basic idea. And everybody after us, fucking run with it. Do what you feel. You can't do that with with a franchise like this. No. It's been mismanaged. It's horrible. But the good news is hope is on the way. Hot rumor is is that John Favreau will be stepping in as the CEO of Lucasfilm after Kathleen Kennedy's contract is up. I believe that's going to happen. Wow. Yep. Scott sat forward. I did. I believe that's going to happen. I mean, he he started Marvel. You know, I mean, his movie is what was the springboard for all of it. Let's hope and that's that was, what the Mandalorian is. I, yeah, that's what yeah. it feels like. Right. 
Let's, you know, I mean, I I actually the feel guy like is proven. I feel like the Kenobi series. I don't blame you for being cynical, but I'm excited I'm by it because it's obvious that the Mandalorian is. Yeah, I'm hoping that's the direction the tempo, we're going in. Right? And not, it's yeah. the metronome now for uh, how they're going. Right. You know what I would rather have instead of Obi Wan, the Jedi movie where it's just some miscellaneous Jedi as opposed to some I see, guy I see I why you're saying know. that. But yeah, I but the it. cool thing is, it's a, I mean, Ewan McGregor's doing it, right? He is. Yeah, so great actor and it's, he, he, he was didn't a great do actor anything associated one, with anything three. for all those years so it doesn't have to tie into any of those movies. It could just be... I, I'm with Scott right. and, and, and he, it, I've said this on previous shows. My problem with the Obi-Wan thing is, is that his story has kind of been told between Rebels, comic books, all this different stuff. Sure. If he leaves Tatooine for any reason other than to protect Luke, then you've basically shat that character. If we're going to tell a, a story about a pre-existing character, let's tell one that was a character that had a shitload of potential but never really got the screen time. I want to see a Darth Maul fucking series. That's yeah. what I want to see. I mean, dude, that character was menacing as shit when he came out in Episode One. They brought him back in Solo. He was brought back in Rebels. I think it's a perfect opportunity to tell a serialized television show of what happens between Darth Maul with Han, with the Han Solo story and Star Wars Rebels. I think I just, it'd be I great. Like Han, I like Darth Maul as like a little thing of evil. I don't want to know too much about Darth Maul, nor do I want to like go on a sympathetic journey. I don't know. Have you, ever, yeah. have you ever watched Clone Wars with his episodes? Yeah, yeah. I'm where, just saying, like, it's, dude, it's, if we're it's gonna so, focus on, so good. I'll take a Jedi movie that's one of the Jedis we don't know that much about. Let's yeah. see, I'll see what you're I saying. Don't, but, and, and that's to go, game. I don't know yeah. that I need a Darth Maul movie. I need a Darth Maul movie like I need a Jabba, I mean a Bubba Fett movie. Yeah, but, I, but that's what I'm saying, though, I man. I a hole in my side. Cool character. Hey, cool characters. Love to see it. We don't need it at this point. Let's move on. Yeah. Right, we all, so we all hated the, what's his name, Ryan Johnson? Star oh Wars. yeah, it's horrible. Piece well, I shit. went and saw Knives Out, and I'm gonna plug it before we leave. It's really good. Oh, right, oh, so, oh I, yeah, it's really good. D- disclaimer: the shit that he makes is great. Yeah. Disclaimer: I think Ryan Johnson is a very good filmmaker. I just think that what he did with Star Wars was fucking atrocious. Okay, it's just sure. my opinion. I I'm don't just think he like he. It's great. I don't disagree. Here's what I'm gonna say. I like the Last Jedi better than I like the Force Awakens because I felt like the Force Awakens was just repackaged Star Wars. And I and I at least like the Last Jedi for the the gambits that it took. You know, the basically you know let the let the past die, and you know, with the exception of the Holdo maneuver, uh, I actually thought that it was let the both, past die. Yeah, and, and <laughs> through the through the fucking dick of a sea cow's green milk. Yeah. Right, right, right. Let the past I mean, die. That's, that that's the story. It's my autobiography. Right. That uh, that's my sex tape. I, I just <laughs> Jesus. I actually like that it was that it took some chances and it did some bold shit. And the reason I realized I liked it so much and even defended it to a certain extent was because I was so fucking pissed off that J.J. Abrams didn't do jack shit other than recycle. Yeah. And, and and in broad strokes, like, there was no nuance. It's just like, all of a sudden, she had the fucking force. Okay? Like... And you don't think that... Dude, you don't think that happened in episode worms, eight? We're, we're going we're, we're gonna to oh, literally do I this again. I liked it when again. I saw it. Yeah. You're right. We're going to do, right, so. do this in a month. And, I, and right, I pulled it earlier. But but look, yeah. when it comes down to Favreau, I really am praying that this rumor is true. It seems to me, me that Bob Why Iger... Be? Dude, Bob yeah. Iger sits back with Disney. Let's look at what they have. You got the Disney brand. Look at Frozen. Tear it up the fucking right. box office right now. Marvel tears up the box office. Pixar tears up the box office. So you have all of these high-level people that run these studios yeah. that get what they're doing and they understand how the brand, the branding of those wing, those those branches work. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting here with Star Wars, which is one of the most legendary movie properties of all time, you got a guy like Kevin Feige doing what they should be doing with Star Wars over at Marvel. Fuck, dude, Favreau putting him in charge is a no-brainer. Yeah. No-brainer. I mean, yeah. That doesn't mean they'll do it. I hope they do. I think they will. I think they I, will. I think they will, too. I think it's, it's a done deal. I mean... Yeah. It, I think so, too. Look, I, maybe this was his test. You, you, know? you see you see all these headlines saying that uh, Disney Plus is not the Netflix destroyer that everyone thought it would be yet. I never thought that. Me, me either. Yeah. But uh, the other headline is, is that The Mandalorian has surpassed... Stranger Things has the most wanted streamed content of the internet of all yep. time. I mean, he did it in three episodes. 
I and, mean, why wouldn't they fucking do that? Well, and this is the other thing, too. Is I was like, well, why did they sign Kathleen Kennedy to an extension? Which I read an article on that the other day. They signed her to the extension because they actually went around with feelers to try to replace her. And this is what they said was the basic, like, kind of speech from behind the scenes. Well, she created this this stuff with Star Wars, and we're seeing how much of a fucking disaster this is. You got, I mean, it's basically the franchise of diminishing returns. Why do I want to step in the middle of this clusterfuck? Yeah. Wait for right. that to end. And then when that's over, then like we Ryan can, Johnson. Then he's we can talk. He's blamed for yeah, destroying the franchise. He did. He, he did. But not single handedly. He no. broke it. He won single handedly, but fuck you. JJ Abrams the, broke it. But they're the ones who approved that shit. We'll go see Knives they, Out. They, yeah. No, they all broke No, dude, I'm going to yeah. go see Knives Out, but yeah. they fucking broke it. They all fucking broke it because they didn't have a plan because they're fucking right. ignorant. Exactly. Well, it's a better days. So, it's two better, better days. days. I, Scott has spoken. Yes. <laughs> I have spoken. Well, that's the good news. And and look, I highly recommend The Mandalorian. Uh, there's a, more cr- just the criticism that I've seen with it all. It's like, oh, well, you know, Star Wars is about having the Force. And that was some of the um, criticism of Rogue One and, and some of the criticism of Solo was that Boy, there was mine. no Force users. Well, I mean, dude, in this man, it's got some. It has that mythology in oh, it. Yeah. It might it's, not be Jedi swinging lightsabers around yet. It's got it, right. but it doesn't, it, it's not based on a bunch of space wizards. People just love. That's being what happy. I like. Hey, I, exactly. I'm happy. I like this. Yeah. Yep, I'm I'm thrilled with the Mandalorian. More, please. More, agreed, please. Agreed. Yeah. And 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 I don't need it all at once. I'm happy it comes out once a week because it allows me to watch 30 minute episodes several times and go I, back I have and a really to text watch. Scott. Yeah, it allows us to talk about things. Yeah, I mean, I love a good cliffhanger. Like I do too. You forget what that's like, oh, yeah. and you can just binge everything. Like, right. good for Disney for bringing that back. Apple's yes. the same way; they're doing yep. the same exact thing. So good for them. Anything and, worth watching on that? On Apple, opinion? yeah. Uh, I'm I'm a little excited about the M Night Shyamalan show that they just signed two seasons. <sighs> I up know for. they just yeah they want um, that trailer is fucking disturbing. It is. It's scary looking. I'm up for that whenever it comes out but i have yet do when i tell you when i put it on when i put on apple plus to see what's going on it goes on and then it goes right off so there's nothing that's really gotcha. exciting okay. a bunch of critics that i've seen talking about their shows on a whole this is basically the the whole thing on that is is that there's some really good shows on apple but the question is do i want to pay for it and yeah, no i don't need another stream i have it for free no. so yeah right yeah. i mean but once but once you have you're done with your trial what's the chances of you re-upping it i have an, a notification in my calendar to shut it down uh-huh. after there that yep. one year <laughs> yep absolutely oh, wow. yeah good for them hey let me say this real fast i have yet to put on netflix since i've had out uh disney it just it just doesn't oh, come I, up i, I, I haven't on. i haven't they Me too. Have they have good documentaries. Of great them. documentaries. I'm sure they do. The no, 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 I'm not. Bikram? Yes. I'm not, Jesus holy Christ. shit. I'm not shitting on Netflix. I'm just saying, since I've gotten, I've had Disney, I have, I haven't really gone back just to it. Just keep watching that Winnie the Pooh movie, huh? Said Apple Dumpling. Look, we all need things to jerk off to. I know, right? Me personally, <laughs> I've been watching. I've been watching Watchmen on HBO. That's so I've been oh, watching, good. I've been watching good. the Mandalorian, and I've also been watching Castle Rock, which is. Very good. That second season Hulu. is fucking good on, on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, it's really, really good. I am almost finished season one of The Righteous Gemstones. Have you watched that? Oh, yeah. I love it. Fuck, it's good. I Half love life. it. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, and His Dark up. Materials. I'm loving it. I, I heard it's oh, I really good. It's so good, I think. Uh, I'm, Scott is basically violently allergic to anything that even remotely smacks of CGI. There are exceptions he'll make. But I'm allergic part, to right? talking babies and talking animals. There it is. Right, right, right. That's fair. Well, and and <laughs> poorly simulated dead actors. Correct. Yeah, like, okay. like his list is so short. Right. <laughs> Look at him trying to be like, it's only two things. He's like the jerk and this and this and lamp. This. You know what I really Three wish? Things. I really wish that they would have did a head sculpt of Peter Cushing like they did in Terminator 1 of Arnold and they would have mm-hmm. put that in Rogue One. That would have looked there awesome. Yeah. <laughs> There's a hood on him. <laughs> Jiggling rubber head. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> If you go to the website, you're going to do a full list of everything Fuck Scott off. hates. <laughs> Look, I was reminded of it the other night. I was watching Empire Strikes Back on Disney Plus, and I'm sitting there watching it. It reminds me of Scott's like, Darth Vader's... Hello. Uh, 
<laughs> Darth <laughs> Vader's fucking like costume. <laughs> Darth Vader's costume looked like a Party City costume in Rogue One. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking? It's the same fucking costume that they recycled out of the Lucasfilm archives. Right, right, right. I'm sitting there watching The Empire Strikes Back at the scene when he's like fucking telling Luke to join his side. They had this big wind tunnel to make it look like, you know, they're in this big air shaft. At certain points, when you watch it, the helmet is actually wobbling back and forth from the wind blowing up. Well, that brings me to my thing I told you. I'm like, don't, like, they have the 4K Star Wars on Disney+. Plus, Right. Like, don't watch them. Because you see every minute Band-Aid on the costumes. I don't know, man. It's like, it's beautiful, and I'm only on A New Hope, but, like, it's beautiful. But I'm like, oh, I never noticed that the back of the Stormtroopers' armors were slit so they could get them on their legs. Like, I never noticed oh, any wow. of that shit. I can uh, see. You notice everything. It's crazy. I can oh, see wow. New Hope being a problem, but I don't know. Every. I need to that watch I, Empire. Everything yeah. I've read on the 4K, they say Empire is fucking awesome in 4K. Now I got to go you buy see a how fucking bad 4K R2 D2's paint job is. Like, but it should be that uh, way. It's used future, man. No, no, right. no. It's right. used, but it's like no. That's just they went outside the. Like, <laughs> yeah, that should be a separate part, not a painted blue thing on the. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, we, okay. it's it's hard to describe, but I'm like, oh, this this looks as clunky as. Holy shit, Gary! Yeah, thank it, you, dude. You just saved me six hundred bucks. You're welcome. There it is. <laughs> Two hundred dollars. No four K no TV for me, buddy. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's it, man. Look, we got anything to add? Knives Out. N- uh, Knives Out and uh, Mandalorian. Knives Out and Mandalorian. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth uh, skipping on one I'll, cup of coffee Can I do month. a giveaway? Yeah, sure. I'll do, I'll do two tickets to one of my shows for whoever comes up online with the longest list of things Scott hates. But they all have to be accurate. You can't make shit up. Yeah, they, they got to be accurate. Yeah. So you just give me a name and they, I'll give two tickets away. But you have to you have to tell us everything Scott hates, and we have to. Oh, that's where awesome. they, where do they least, interact? Where I don't do they know. Go? Where do you post think, shit? Facebook? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Can I just answer? Do with it in one the group. Word? Everything? Yeah, everything. No, no. You oh, got, do I, I win? Want, I want specifics. <laughs> yeah. No one's gonna do it. All right, well, I'll look, do it. We appreciate you guys. I'll do listening. it. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Here's everything I hate. Give me my tickets. Give me my tickets. <laughs> How do you do it every couple of weeks? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jump over to iTunes. Please subscribe. Please write us a review. You can find us over at Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar. Also, join our Facebook group. It's the PPB Guys group. You can uh, message on there, you know, share some stuff. Our buddies share all the time. We share all the time. Bust each other's balls. Good times. Also, check out Not Real Radio, Scary Thoughts. And check us out on YouTube. And check us out on Twitter. And check us out on Stitcher. And check us out on iTunes again. Thanks for listening. End scene.